Hello ladies and gents, Pepperbell here, bringing you guys an update video on the Canadian Armed Forces modification video I actually uploaded yesterday on my channel. And the reason being is because they added a few new assets at the time I recorded it, and then edited it and uploaded it and all that jargon. They actually came out with a brand new update, version 1.7, which included a few new assets that were missing, which I never, it never even occurred to me during the video actually when I was making it that these technically should have been in here from the get-go. But they've actually been added. So I'm going to go over them real quickly, try to keep this video short as to not have another 41 minute long video showcasing just a few assets that have been added in addition to the mod. So, without further ado, let's go take a look. One of the original, and I'm talking like normal looking soldiers in the Canadian Forces that I've completely failed to realize they did not include was the Recce Dead. These guys are pretty much reconnaissance soldiers. If you think of in terms of recon marines, they're pretty much identical. They work in four man teams and they usually go out ahead of the main body. And they'll go and recce out a position, get all the details on it, draw diagrams of what's around, get all the information. I'm talking like all the information. Like you'd be sitting there writing down like so-and-so pissed at 2100 hours and like stuff like that. Very, very detailed information. And then you'd report back, give all the information to the main body, and then they would go and mount an assault according to your details. And hopefully if your details are accurate, it'll re uh, result in fewer casualties, a smoother operation, and... Everybody gets to eat their nice rations afterwards. Hopefully things turn out nicely. So they added them and they look pretty much exactly the way they do in real life. Because obviously in recce you're going to want to wear as least gears you can. Usually you'll drop, if you carry rucksacks out there or any type of small pack on your back, you will usually drop it off at the ORV, which is the objective rendezvous, before you actually go out and start scouting out and wrecking the area. And they always wear bush caps. Usually don't even wear frag vests. Right now they're kind of wearing... It looks like they have just a regular tack vest on, but when you look at the back, it looks like they have kind of the frag vest as well. But I mean, this is a minor thing. It's really not a big deal. But usually you'll go out with as minimal gear as you can on your back. Uh, so you'll actually wind up wearing like a lot lighter gear in general. Just so you can move quickly and scout out and be comfortable while you're doing it and then just get the hell out whenever you can. So you can tell they also camoed their weapons, which... I personally never seen in real life, but who really gives a shit because it's just kind of a mod, right? So it's not really a big deal. On this side, they actually camoed them with green camo, which looks kind of cool. I was thinking they're going to use just the standard weapon that looks like so, just keeping it green and black or steel colored. But they actually ended up camoing the crap out of it, pretty much similar to the way the JTF2 did with their weapons. And they just kind of like reused the assets from these weapons over here. On the recce patrols. Now, I included the JTF2 once again, and the reason why is because they actually changed the way they look slightly, and I mean like ever so slightly. And for for some reason, I can't spawn the guy that I saw last time, but one of them was wearing a balaclava, and I thought that was pretty neat because that's actually what they do wear in real life. If you look at some pictures of them, you'll notice that they wear balaclavas a lot. They're not always just exposing their face like this, and unfortunately, I couldn't actually spawn one successfully that was wearing a balaclava for some strange reason but anyway, that's besides the point so now i also included two other additional choppers this is pretty much the griffin medevac edition and it's pretty much just like well a medevac chopper nothing really special no guns on it just two a pilot and co-pilot and then that's pretty much all it is it looks slightly different but not by much and then of course i re-included the special forces 427th aviation squadron you know, the ones I'm talking about. The Special Forces edition of Kansas Comm Unit, the Air Unit. And the reason why I included them this time is because last time I pointed out that they didn't really look any different. If you go and look at this crew, which, you know, looks pretty much standard, and you go and take a look at this crew, they looked pretty much identical. But now when you look at them, they actually look different. I mean, they have like the nice skull mask on their helmets. And you can tell right away when you look at the arm patch on their shoulders, they actually have markings on it to signify that, hey, we're different than your traditional air unit. And the Canadian flag actually looks really realistically velcroed on there, which is actually pretty cool. So next up, we have the LAV-3, Canada's light armored vehicle. This thing has a 25mm gun on it, as well as a C6 mounted on it, and a C6 machine gun kind of built into it in a coaxial style housing. Pretty beast. This thing is known for being so damn good. It's been deployed to Afghanistan, it's been used in combat, and it's just known for being an all-around effective vehicle and combat vehicle. It's just a pretty 
fucking sweet thing to play around with. Unfortunately, I never got to see one of these or really operate with one personally. I mean, I got to touch one and see one. That doesn't really count for shit, though. But I mean, like, I never actually got to operate with one of these. Being a reservist, we don't really get the luxury of messing around with uh, labs and stuff. But I mean, it's obviously an effective vehicle. I'm glad they brought it into this mod because it was something that the mod was lacking was actually armored vehicles that made sense. And that also brings me over here to the Leopard C2. This is a German-engineered tank. This thing is just fucking crazy. It's got a 120 millimeter gun on it. It has a 50 caliber machine gun on top, and I believe the coaxial machine gun on it, I believe, is a 7.62R also a 50 cal. I can go ahead and take a look at that after. So the Leopard C2, obviously, like I said, is German-engineered. It was uh, the origin of birth of this fucking crazy war machine was in West Germany. And Canada has been contracted with getting a whole bunch of them, and this is a pretty much our main battle tank. So instead of us using Abrams, like the M1A2 Abrams, or any version of the Abram that the Americans use, we use this. You gotta love that German engineering, because it's pretty goddamn awesome. The Leopard 2 has been deployed to Afghanistan. It hasn't been, I don't really know the history and story of it being, you know, battle tested in Afghanistan or anything like that. But it has seen some action. As far as I'm concerned, I don't really know. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not too informed on how the Leopard 2s operated out in Afghanistan or anything in that type of situation. I know that on paper, theoretically on paper, the Leopard C2 is supposed to outperform the M1A1 Abram or M1A2 Abrams in pretty much every way, but it lacks the battle-tested provenness that the M1 series has. So the Americans tank, obviously... It uses a new, or a new style of armor plating as well. I completely forget the name of it, though. But it basically uses pretty much the same armor plating style that the M1 series uses as well. So overall, it's a pretty damn effective tank. And I really like how they actually added this to the game. Because it finally gives the Canadian Forces mod like more than just like, Oh, hey, look, we got soldiers with like pretty much rifles that the Americans have, but renamed and made slightly better. That's in, like, you know, JTF2 assets and stuff, and, like, helicopters that look identical. They finally actually started adding vehicles that are actually going to change a lot of this mod and actually give it more purpose in the sense that we can have convoys of labs. We can actually turn... Missions can actually be utilized properly when you're playing with this particular mod. And last but not least is the CH-147 Chinook. This thing is pretty much the standard transport helicopter you will see. I mean, the Americans use it. We use it. It's a, just a really damn solid helicopter. Again, I never got to operate with one of these, but I have been inside them. Obviously, I have touched them with my hands, but like I said, that doesn't mean shit because you can just go to any air show and touch one. It's not a big deal, but I never got the luxury of operating one of these. So I actually like what they did with this. And what I'm going to talk about is not just, like, if you want to get inside it, you don't just, like, run up to the side here and be like, get in pilot seat. It doesn't work like that at all. It's a little bit more realistic. It kind of reminds me of Joint Operations. If you guys are familiar with that game by Nova Logical, made back in 2004, 2005-ish. Joint Operations or Black Hawk Down or any of those Delta Force games, you basically would manually run into every helicopter and then sit down, which I thought was cool because if the helicopter was flying, you were actually able to walk around inside it. And I thought that was really, really cool instead of being restricted to just sitting in a seat like uh, Battlefield or any other game where you just kind of get stuck in a chair and you can't move, but you can move your camera around, but you can't freely move around inside the vehicle. So it kind of feels like Star citizen -y. and the way it works, basically, the ramp at the back comes down. This ramp actually comes down, this is the only way you can get inside it. And for some strange reason, it only opens over here. So if I come over here, open it, the ramp will come down slowly. Pretty damn sweet. And then you just climb up inside, and then you can take a seat anywhere you want, or you can run all the way to the front, you can get on the guns, get in the pilot seats, whatever you want to do. And you can just go ahead and be like, I want to ride in the back, and then you just sit down, and now you're in the back, and you can close the ramp. And then you can take off and fly around. So, I mean, I thought this was really, really cool. I don't, like, they have a hole in the middle there, too, I'm guessing, if you they want to have it so you can fast rope out, or do an airdrop halo jump in from a Chinook. I don't really know. It's entirely up to you. But I mean, I really like how they actually detailed it in this way, where you actually have to open the back ramp and walk inside manually to just get a seat. You can't just like walk up beside the helicopter and magically just teleport inside of it sitting down like every other chopper in this game. I thought that was really cool how they did that. So, running back out. 
There's a few things they also changed, which I completely wanted to mention. So the Carl G, obviously I have it on my back. This is something I mentioned in my last video. And why is he taking a step? What is this? Oh okay, yeah, there we go. So this is something I didn't, or I mentioned, but it wasn't in the mod. I'm talking about the sight. So you can see the sight's mounted on the side now. That is what I was referring to. You can get a sight that actually mounts to the side of the Carl G, which you can see right here. And that would actually allow you to engage targets at a much further range. You can see this is what it looks like when you're aiming down it. It's pretty damn accurate too, because that's pretty much what it looks like. They still don't have a reload animation for it. No big deal. And for some strange reason, when I fire it, they completely removed the animation. All the smoke effects and everything. It just shoots now, as you can see. I mean, you actually see the round disappear and come out the barrel. So now you can see right down it. Like, I thought that was pretty cool. And you reload it and you see the round pop inside. There it is. Fire it. Disappears. I mean, I thought that was really, really cool. Unfortunately, though, for some strange reason, all the other effects are gone. Like, you just you shoot it. There's no smoke. There's no nothing. Because usually there is a lot of smoke. And because since this thing literally sucks all the air around you, which is why you have to be beside the weapon and... Otherwise, you know, your lungs will be completely empty and you will probably die depending on the situation of where you're standing and vicinity of the weapon firing. But I mean, I thought it was really cool how they did that. We'll take a look at the uh, Lav and the Leopard in more detail. I'm talking about getting it actually inside of them and get, get inside, yes. So, let's go ahead and be the commander. So, if you're the commander and the Leopard 2... It's pretty straightforward. You have access to the 12.7 millimeters, so in other words, a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on top. You can actually see it swiveling up here. This little tertiary gun you can see on top, right there. Little, it's all kind of weird looking. It looks almost sci fi, so I'm rotating it right now. This is the gun you control when you're in the commander seat. And it's a 50 cal, so it pumps a ton of lead out. You can zoom in pretty well zoom out it's got a built-in range finder so it's really easy to ID where the hell you're shooting targets because you weigh the fuck out nice addition to the tank so you can obviously switch to the driver's seat as well which this is it like this is all you can see you can't look around inside unlike the lab 3 where you actually have a cockpit you can look around in this is pretty much all it is just a, a nice shady window or of course you can go in the third person and then drive around do whatever you want to do. So, last but not least, the gunner seat. And this is where you actually control the main gun. Obviously, the 120mm cannon, which is actually, like, absolutely crazy. And, of course, you got your 7.62 coaxial machine gun mounted on it. And you can just completely spray a ton of ammo out with this thing. It's got, like, 4,000 rounds. So, I mean, unless you're doing a lot of crazy shit, you're not going to run out anytime soon. I mean, I mean, I really like how they actually added it. It doesn't even protrude out the barrel, too. It's kind of, like, hidden away inside of there, which you can see, and you can see the muzzle flash as you're firing it. That was pretty neat. And then, of course, obviously, you got your cannon. You can pop off heavy or high-explosive rounds. Don't even know where the hell that went. And you can zoom in at three different levels. So you can be here, zoom in, zoom in even further. That's, like, 600 meters away, and you can just shoot. I'm not even entirely sure if you can change ammo types, but as you can see, it just kind of like, there's not really an explosion. There's really no animation for it. It just punches through things. I mean, if I were to like, turn around and, yeah, then I'm probably going to get shit on by everybody, but just shoot the lav. One, it just punches fire. right through it. You don't really see an explosion or anything, and that little black dot is pretty much where it hits. One, check your goddamn you can see fire. it hit there again. But trust me, it's definitely doing damage, because I've been testing this. And, exactly, things will blow up if you t continue to shoot it and everyone's dead. Pretty devastating weapon, holy crap. So yeah, killing all the, killing everybody. That's how I roll. But I mean, it works. It's, I'm hoping they'll start adding a little bit more animations when it comes to firing these things, because it's just like no explosions, nothing. It kind of seems like they went backwards in that regard, but needless to say, it still works. Let's go ahead and take a look at this now. 
So you'll see the LAV3, the driver, actually has a cockpit in which he sits inside. So if I go in first person, I can actually look around inside the cockpit. It's not, like, amazingly detailed, obviously. It's kind of, like, low res. Everything kind of looks a little bit shady. But the point is, you can still look around inside it. And then you can drive it around, move it, do whatever you need to do, go in third person, see everything else. Now, the C6 on top, I have not figured out how to actually use that. Do we think there would be a commander seat? But it turns out... No, there is none. <laughs> I can actually raise my head out the top of the driver's seat as well. So if I'm like here, I'm, oh, I just raise it up and I can actually look. Or I can turn it in and close it up. So I mean, nice little additions to the driver seat of the Lav 3. And of course, if I want to go and be the gunner now, I have access to the 25mm gun. As well as a 7.62 coaxial machine gun. It's actually a C6 GPMG kind of mounted internally. And you can use that. Or you got your high explosive 25mm gun. And you got safe mode so that you don't freaking squeeze off rounds by accident and kill people with it. So I mean I thought it was pretty cool how they added that. Makes it a lot nicer. It's even in infrared as you can tell. Everything is in heat vision, which is really, really cool. You can ID targets a lot further away. You can zoom in, which changes the reticle as you do so. And then third person. So I'm assuming once they add the commander slot to this vehicle, he'll be able to pop his head out. And or actually, wait, maybe this is how you do it. There you go. Okay, so you turn out. And then I have access to this. I don't have access to it. You would think I'd be able to... Like a turn out and pop my head out. But yeah, so that's pretty much all you can do. I'm guessing that right there to the right of me is where the commander's going to be sitting. And then he'll be able to turn his head out and actually mount that C6 machine gun. Which would definitely make a hell of a lot more sense. Considering it's, just, it's pretty much useless right now. There's no way you can use it. So I'm guessing they will, at some point, actually add that and make it usable by having a commander seat in this vehicle. Two, gunner, get in that vehicle. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for joining me today, guys. See you next time.